be very quiet. This is a Kentucky car guy in his pristine natural habitat. If we're cautious, we might be able to safely approach and even, if we're lucky, interact. Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder and as always, you know, welcome to the channel. Before we get going on our comparison between the factory LS3 intake manifold and the rod mod LS3 intake manifold, both with a 102 and a 90 millimeter throttle body test, very cool. Make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified when I do all this testing because there's a lot of this kind of cool stuff coming up. We've got a 427 LS3 headed combo. We're running intake manifold tests with the guys at Brian Tooley Racing, so check it out. Okay, guys, before we get going, we need to take a look at our test motor because obviously the test motor affects the kind of gains that we get from any sort of modification or change that we make. This was a 427 LS7 short block, although it did have a piston upgrade on it. It had forged pistons. It was bored 4130. It had a set of Molly flat top pistons with 2cc valve reliefs. It had a set of Trick Flow 255 CNC ported LS3 heads that had been milled 50 thousandths. It had 1.7 uh, ratio shaft rockers from Brian Tooley Racing. Had a pretty good sized camshaft in it. It was 618 lift, 247 to 70 on the exhaust side, 112 plus two. So good sized camshaft. So the thing served to, you know, allow us to maximize the flow rate or tax the flow rate of all of these intake manifolds. So let's find out how all of the intake manifolds did. And by all of them, I mean the factory LS3 and then the rod mod, both with the 90 and the 102 millimeter throttle body. Put her on. Yeah, this is going to be all the powers. The stock is where it's at. Man. You can't do any better than that. If you want weight reduction, you don't need to get rid of the manifold. Oh, That's I know. Aluminum heads, aluminum block, and a composite manifold. That's a really a pretty good combination. Wheel it in past all these hoses and wires and everything. Come on, James, I can't do everything. <laughs> oh, that's why I really this one. Oh, yeah, hooked it. It snapped into place. Boom. This is a lot easier just um, me using my camera, watching somebody else do all the dyno work. I like, kind of like this. <laughs> a little funny angle there. No, not with the dribble. That's, that's got the ball socket. It's like <laughs> right? All right. Click, click. Okay, very quickly, let's jump right in and find out how our 427 LS3 headed LS7 combo did. I went over the, the specs earlier, but let's take a look and see what happens when we ran this combination with the factory LS3 intake manifold and 90 millimeter drive factory drive by wire throttle body. That intake manifold notoriously has always done very, very well in any of my testing. You could take a look at the videos I have up on my channel on the LS3 intake manifold. We ran all the EFI intake manifolds and all the carbureted intake manifolds and quite honestly, the factory LS3 intake manifold has always been very, very hard to beat. So let's see how it did on this combination with the big cam and stuff. This combination with the factory intake manifold produced a peak of 665 horsepower and just under 600 foot-pounds, 598, 599 foot-pounds of torque. So it did well. So this is our baseline starting point. Now we need to find out how that rod mod intake manifold did so 
Let's check it out. Now it's time to install the Rod Mod LS3 intake manifold. You can take a look here, install the rods to improve the airflow into the port. A little bit of port matching on the outside. The question is, how would it do compared to the stock LS3 intake? We installed the rod mod intake first with the factory 90 millimeter drive by wire throttle body, and then we would later step up to the 102. Got a little bit of a lumpy idle. Right, and 1400 RPM. Okay, now let's take a look and see what happens when we install the Rod Mod LS3 intake manifold on our 427 stroker. I was really interested to see this test because I figured if any motor, this modified, heavily modified 427, it would definitely take advantage of intake manifold upgrade, so it needed more head flow. And if anything was going to show much more than the stock LS3 or in a cam, you know, 62 LS3, this modified version would definitely show some power gains. And quite honestly, I was a little disappointed. I mean, I was expecting big power gains from the rod mod, having seen things in the internet and having never tested one. I was very excited but here's what happened when we ran the rod mod intake manifold where you put the rod in insert and do a little porting and and try to improve the airflow going into the runners but equipped with the rod mod intake manifold and 90 millimeter throttle body to start out with 
The peak power was 671 horsepower and 603 foot-pounds of torque. So we did see some minor gains compared to the stock intake manifold. We went from 665 to 671. I'll be showing you that in just a second. But first, I wanted to show you the difference in the power offered by our change in throttle body. So we went from the factory 90 millimeter throttle body, the factory drive-by wire, to a Granatelli 102 millimeter throttle body. Go ahead and show you a photo of that. But here's what happened when we did the throttle body upgrade. Basically nothing. <laughs> and this is not surprising. I've, I've done these kinds of tests a lot. And, and I've always said on this channel, make sure that you match the throttle opening of the intake manifold to the throttle body size. And we put an oversized throttle body on. I was kind of curious, and a lot of guys were um, obviously from their comments, what happens when we put a big throttle body on there? Does it improve the airflow? Or does it decrease the airflow because we have an edge inside there, the bigger throttle opening um, on the throttle body, exiting the throttle body is bigger than the opening going into the manifold. So it hits a ledge. Does that cause turbulence and reduce power? Does it improve airflow? Does it improve power? Here we see it really didn't change anything. So obviously the intake manifold is kind of dictating what happens to the power output and not the throttle body size because we've got a 90 or 92 millimeter throttle opening. This one was even ported slightly so I expected gains but we really didn't see it. But here's what here's a comparison between the rod mod intake manifold and the stock LS3 intake manifold. Go ahead and show you here. You can see it's a little bit, like I said, 6, 665 to 671 or so, you know, 667 six, horsepower, depending on which run you pick, but not a lot. In my opinion, for me, at least not worth doing all those modifications to the intake manifold to get this kind of gain. Let me know in the comments if you guys have seen even bigger gains on other applications, because like I said, this is the first time I've ever tested this. I'm Richard Holder. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified when I do all the tests because I've got a lot more testing just like this coming up, including the next video, which is performance design, LS3 intake manifold. I'm very excited about that one.